Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are studying the Worth 4 dot test. The Worth 4 dot test was introduced by the ophthalmologist Claude Worth in 1903 as a test of binocularity. Later, Hardy in 1937 incorporated the lights of Worth into a handheld flashlight. So first of all, what principles is the Worth 4 dot test based on? The first principle on which it works is the principle of simultaneous perception. The simultaneous perception basically means that when the visual signals from the individual eyes are basically transferred to the cortex and they are actually seen by the cortex at the same time. So this is called simultaneous perception. The next principle on which it works is the principle of sensory fusion. That means the two images which were seen simultaneously by the brain will now be fused into one single visual image. So if you give the right eye, suppose this horizontal line to see, left eye you give a vertical line to see, the composite image that will be formed by the brain after simultaneous perception and sensory fusion will be that of a cross. Similarly, if the patient who is not wearing any glasses, from the right eye he will see the word four dot lights like this, from the left eye he will see it like this and the combined image will also be similar. So of course, this is no rocket science. However, what is happening in our worth food or test is that the patient is wearing these red green goggles with red in front of the right eye and green in front of the left eye. Therefore, from the right eye, he's only going to see the, re the red color images and from the left eye, he's only going to see the green color images. And if everything is normal with the patient, if the binocularity is normal, the patient is going to see these four dots of the worth four dot light test. That is one red, two green and one white. And let me tell you that the white color dot can also appear as red and green based on different principles that we will discuss in a while. So remember that the patient is wearing these red green goggles and remember the second image because throughout this video we are going to imagine as if we are standing behind the patient. So the patient's right side will be our right side and the patient left will be our left hand side. So basically we have a distant worth 4 dot test, we have a near worth 4 dot test and we have a macular worth 4 dot test. So let us just quickly see the basics. So a distant worth 4 dot test is basically present, you know, you can find it below your visual equity chart and it is used at a distance of about 6 meters. It subtends an angle of 1.25 degrees. The near worth 4 dot test as it suggests that as the name suggests is done at 33 centimeters. However, the angle subtended is about 6 degrees. Similarly, we have a special worth 4 dot test which is called the macular test specifically done to chart out your central scotoma. Macular worth 4 dot test basically can be presented actually as a sleeve and this sleeve actually sits you know, on this pen torch and can be used again at 33 centimeters, subtending an angle of somewhat similar to that of the distance worth four dot test, that is 1.25. Patient is basically wearing these Armstrong goggles or the red green goggles, and he's standing at a distance of about six meters from the worth four dot lights and what happens is that the red filter in front of the right eye will allow only the red light to pass through it. Therefore, the patient will only see the red color object from the red filter. Whereas from the left side filter, which is a green filter, the patient is going to see only the green color and all the red color will be blocked by that. So that is a very important principle of the filters and why we use these glasses. So in the right eye, the green lights will be filtered and therefore the right eye will see only the red and the white lights at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. In the left eye, which has a green filter, the left eye will filter out all the red colors and therefore will see only the green and white lights which are present at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock position. So, after you show the dots to the patient, you ask him the number of dots that he can appreciate the location of the red and the green dots with respect to each other, the color of the lights which are seen by the patient. You also need to inquire about the color of the white light 
and also ask about the constancy of the lights if all the lights are constantly present or if some are coming and going now the white light actually will appear red through the red lens if you see individually and if you see individually through the green lens the white light of the word for dot will appear green in color however the test is carried out binocularly and under binocular condition the color of the white dot is decided by the dominating eye so if the right eye is dominating the color of the white dot will be red in color and if the left eye is dominating the color of the white dot will be green in color now in some patients what happen is that they will have alternate dominance and therefore the color will be shifting in between red green sometimes red and sometimes green so this happens when the patient has alternate dominance now should we go a step further in interpretation suppose the patient sees four lights that is two green lights one red light and one white light whose color will be decided by the ocular dominance now in the first case if the patient has normal alignment that is orthotropia and he sees four dots or four lights on the word four dot test it means that the test is normal and the patient has normal binocularity however sometimes despite having a deviation or despite having a heterotropia patient will still report the test to be like that of the normal test that is four lights in such a condition abnormal retinal correspondence or anomalous retinal correspondence is said to be present normally what happens is that when you have the eyes which are straight looking forward the fovea of one eye is actually in correspondence to the fovea of another and whenever the objects which are falling on the corresponding point the brain will interpret those objects to have a single visual direction and you will get a single image like this okay so here in this case you have a normal correspondence where you have a fovea to fovea correspondence in both the eyes and therefore the brain is believing that both the eyes are straight and it will give you a single image and therefore you will have this normal correspondence and you will have this normal results on the worth four dot test however sometimes what happens is that one of the eye might get deviated towards one side example here this eye is deviated outwards and there is an exo deviation so you can see that in the normal eye the object is projecting on the fovea however in the eye which is deviated now the object is actually falling on another point other than the fovea but in such cases sometimes what happens is the fovea of the normal eye will develop correspondence with this the normal location on the nasal retina or on temporal retina depending on the deviation right so this new point which develops correspondence with the fovea of the other eye is called a pseudo fovea so here such a correspondence is called abnormal retinal correspondence right so here a new retinal point has developed correspondence to the fovea of the other eye now since correspondence has developed although it is an abnormal correspondence the brain will still believe that both eyes are straight and they are uh, they are all coming from the same direction so this is called abnormal retinal correspondence and therefore you will not have double vision in abnormal retinal correspondence and you will have a single image even in abnormal retinal correspondence despite having a squint right so here also you will get a normal worth four dot test so i hope that is clear so this is what i was talking about eyes are straight test is normal but the eyes are not straight even then if the test is normal you have to suspect a normal retinal correspondence so now let us go further up now let us look at this image here the patient actually has an outward deviation or what is called as the exo deviation okay or exotropia now here you can see that the two red crosses are the fovea and there is correspondence between these two fovea however because of the deviation the image of the object is falling on the fovea of one eye whereas in the eye which is deviated outward the image is actually forming on the temporal retina therefore since the image is forming on the non corresponding points what will happen the visual direction in which the brain will localize this object in the visual space will also be different and therefore instead of seeing one image the brain will interpret it to be two images so here 
although there is normal correspondence that is fovea to fovea correspondence but the object is being projected on two non corresponding points and whenever that happens you will have a double vision or diplopia so this patient suppose from the right eye that is from the right filter he sees these two red dots from the left eye he sees three green dots and because these are these are falling on the non corresponding points the patient will actually see a total of five lights two red and three green color and this indicates that there is diplopia now you have to go a step further and ask the patient regarding the location of the green and the red dots in re with respect to each other so here you can see that the dots which are being formed from the right eye are actually present on the left side here okay so the red dots are being formed on the left side and the green dots which are coming from the left eye are actually formed on the right side remember so remember that here what is happening your right hand side is actually the right hand side of the patient also okay so the green is present on the right hand side and the red is present on the left hand side in this case and since this is a crossing of the images this is called cross diplopia and this is seen in case of exo deviation or exotropia so you see cross diplopia and exotropia and it is also known as heteronemous diplopia now let us see what happens if the eye is deviated inwards and the patient actually has esotropia so here i have drawn both the foveas in red color that means that this fovea is corresponding to this fovea however the images of the object are not falling on those corresponding fovea in one eye which is normal the image is forming on the fovea but in the other eye it is forming on the nasal retina and not on the fovea and therefore the image of that eye is falling somewhere temporarily okay so in this case also although there is normal correspondence present both the foveas are not straight and different points are being stimulated by the object different means non corresponding points and therefore the brain is interpreting it as double vision so in this case again the right eye will see two red lights the left eye will see three green lights there will be five lights in total that means there is diplopia but here what is important to observe is that the left eye images are present on the left side and the right eye images are present on the right side of the patient and that means that there is diplopia but the diplopia is not crossed and this is called uncrossed diplopia which is seen in case of esotropia right so uncrossed diplopia is seen in esotropia and it is also called homonymous diplopia so there's a mnemonic with which you can remember this easily exotropia because it has an x in it it basically causes cross diplopia or heteronymous diplopia and esotropia causes uncrossed diplopia so let us go higher and higher up so what's next next is suppression now in this image that we studied previously there was diplopia right now what if brain decides that this is causing me trouble and let me suppress one of these false images right so this process what will happen to avoid diplopia brain is suppressing one image and most of the time it is the false image so your false images are going to disappear and now you will see only one single image which is coming from the normal eye right so only one image will be seen and that will be the image which is coming from the non suppressed eye so let us understand this again with our patient so with the left eye the patient is seeing those three green dots with the right eye he is seeing two red dots and normally he will see that diamond configuration if there was no suppression and there's no diplopia also however if there is suppression of the left eye the patient will see only the images which are coming from the right eye and therefore he will see only two red lights so whenever a patient tells you that he is seeing only two red lights it means that the left eye is suppressed similarly if this patient what happens is that the right eye is suppressed then you will see only three green lights with and sometimes what will happen is patients will actually alternate that means sometimes he'll see two red light sometimes he'll see three green light that means his brain has not yet decided which eye to suppress and this is called alternate suppression where he's switching on between the red and the green and we did it so now should we revise here we go 
If you see normal diamond configuration and four lights like this, it means either there's normal binocularity or there's abnormal retinal correspondence based on whether squint is present or squint is absent. If you see three green lights, it means that there is suppression of the right eye. If you see only two red lights, it means that there is a suppression of the left eye. If you see five lights, it basically means there is diplopia. If the left is present on the left side and right is present on the right side, it means that there is uncrossed diplopia seen in case of esotropia. If you see five lights but the right, the red one is present on the left and the green one is present on the right, it means that there is a cross diplopia seen in case of exotropia. So that was for today. I hope it was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section. Thank you and have a nice day.